get started here in chapter 1 when a man just simply does not understand. We're in 1 Samuel chapter 1, and we're going to read for you verses 1 through 8. It says, There was a man named Elkanah, or Elkanah, depending on how you would want to read that, who lived in Ramah in the region of Zuf, in the hill country of Ephraim. He was the son of Jeroham, son of Elihu, son of Tohu, son of Zuf, of Ephraim. Elkanah had two wives, Hannah and Penina, or Hannah and Penina, Penina, depending on how you would want to pronounce that, of course. And Penina had two children, had children, but Hannah did not. By the way, just mention here, uh, you know, just simply since we're getting started here, those ah, uh, Penina, or El, Elihu, Elkina. Every time you see the word ah, uh, you know, that's like Jehovah. Elkina, Elohim. So all of these people have God embedded, the name of God actually embedded within their name. Just something to mention there for you. Each year, Kana would travel to Shiloh to worship and sacrifice to the Lord of, he of the heavens of armies of the tabernacle. The priests of the Lord at that time were the two sons of Eli, Hophni, Hophni and Phinehas. Okay, Phinehas. On the days Elkanah presented his sacrifice, he would give portions of the meat to Penina, Penina's children, excuse me, and each of her children. And though he loved Hannah, or Hannah, he would give her only one choice portion because the Lord had given her no children. So Penina would taunt Hannah and make fun of her because the Lord had kept her from having children. And year after year, it was the, at that particular time, Penina would taunt Hannah as they went to the tabernacle. Each time, Hannah would be reduced to tears and would not even eat. Why are you crying, Hannah? Elkanah would ask. Why aren't you eating? Why be downhearted just because you have no children? You have me. Isn't that better than having Ten sons. I should tell you, when man does not understand. Yeah, this is the launch of this particular book at, uh, as, it is, at it, as it is written. And it sees, uh, it is after, of course, it, excuse me, it is actually still the period that we refer to as the Judges. The book of Judges, as you recall, has a number of persons who were judges there. Uh, that's where the story of Samson is, of Gideon, uh, and of a number of others, uh, of Deborah, of course. But, uh, and so it's, it's still that period, it's after that period, and there is still warring that's going on between God's people and those persons who have occupied uh, the land that's supposed to belong to, the, to God's people. But nevertheless... It is, it is in that particular period, just to set the stage for you historically, so you just get some sense real quickly, uh, biblically speaking. And you have, in the opening here, Elkanah, or Elkanah, depending on how you, know, you want to mention it or speak, speak of it. And he has two wives, and it is clear, you know, just cutting to the chase, you got one wife who's able to have children, you have another wife who doesn't have children. And to be barren, to be without children... Uh, that's that's difficult today, you know. Probably somebody may be watching this, and certainly I know people who, uh, women particularly, who you know have not had children. Um, uh, and we know that uh, persons are called, as it were, to extraordinary service when that happens. They're called to it when they're not, but they're called to service in the sense that they don't just simply have to focus on family, as Paul would, Paul would express it. You know, they have the opportunity to serve God to the utmost. But nevertheless, without a child, uh, you know, she recognized, Hannah recognized that uh, to be barren like that, she felt like, felt like a third class citizen. And the other wife did not help in the matter. In fact, she flaunted it in Hannah's face. It, it became a constant sore. Now, of course, you know, the other issue that we have here, it looks like Elkanah has two wives. He does, at least, 
that's what's in this story. It doesn't mean that there are not more, but certainly there are two that are the principles of this particular unfolding. Nevertheless, in this extraordinary circumstance, uh, Hannah, we could even say she is a person who is crying, and when that continues under our, uh, you know, when we're looking at um, in our technical descriptions of depression, Hannah is depressed because we know that she feels lonely because of what her husband has said. She has a sense of loneliness. We can say she has a sense of uselessness, okay, hopelessness. Those are two things, usefulness, hopelessness, okay, and helplessness. Those are the three things of depression. Okay, and this is going on a long, long term. You got that for like six weeks? Believe me, you know, crying incessantly, which she obviously is doing. And of course, what her husband says, what are you crying about? You know, that's how we can be as men. You know, what are you crying about? Because we simply don't get it. We don't understand. And his answer was, you have me. <laughs> Isn't that nice of Alcana? to be able to say, you know, you have me. And uh, we'll give him credit for trying to encourage his wife. But the fact is that often in circumstances, man does not understand. We just don't get it. But we have a God who does get it. But for right now, in this, these few minutes, we set the table with this experience, with this woman who is broken, with this woman that many would, would classify her as being depressed to say the least, among other things. And those around it, whether it be the other wife and or it be her husband, have not made it better. But we thank God that we do have someone who understands. <laughs>